This week at Starbase, construction continues on Pad B in the new Gigabay. The tank farm expansion is put through a round of testing. Cleanup begins at the Massey Outpost with a minor setback. And we have new flyover images coming out of Florida. Now let's dig into this week's update and take a closer look. Starting off this week's update, let's take a look at the cleanup operations following Ship 36's anomaly, which started 41 hours after the explosion. Once SpaceX deemed the Massey outpost safe enough for crews to start assessing the damage, we could see activity ramping up in the area. Multiple cranes were brought in to move around the larger pieces of debris, which were scattered across a wide area. Some debris also landed across the Rio Grande in Mexico, where a legal dispute with the Mexican government is delaying cleanup and recovery efforts. While the definitive cause of the accident is not yet known, Elon Musk commented that the failure began in a composite overwrap pressure vessel or a COPV. Now, whether the COPV itself ruptured the payload section of the ship or whether the COPV overpressurized the header tanks, resulting in the subsequent failure and loss of the vehicle, is still being debated. Either way, with no flight-ready ships in reserve and key testing infrastructure damaged or destroyed, it could be several months until Starship's next launch. On Tuesday, during the cleanup, one of the cranes overbalanced and tipped over, falling onto its side while lifting a heavy piece of debris. The accident is currently under investigation by OSHA. The larger crane at Massey's, which was upright when Ship 36 exploded, was inspected to make sure that its boom wasn't damaged in the blast. Next up, we're going to take a look at all of the construction that took place at Starbase this week. Starting at the launch site, we could see a pair of wastewater MOVAC tanks were delivered to the launch complex, with one being taken over to the tank farm offload area and the other being located near the Pad B's deluge system. One of the corner pipe segments was also installed at Pad B's water cooling manifold, but not without some trouble. After being lifted into place, the piece had to be removed before being reinstalled. Cladding installation continues on the east side of the launch tower at Pad B. The cladding will help protect the structural steel from Starship's and Super Heavy's exhaust during launch and catch. Another tank farm skid was also delivered on Wednesday morning. Eight hold-down clamps were delivered this week and were brought over to Pad B for installation. The pad will have 20 of these clamps in all, one for each engine in Super Heavy's outer ring. The clamps are strong enough to keep the booster and ship upright in high winds and during static fire tests and are released prior to ignition during launches. Moving on to the build site construction updates, a new assembly stand and jig under construction in front of Mega Bay 2 was given a corrugated covering, possibly for a concrete floor. The first continuous flight auger was brought into the footprint of Giga Bay to begin pile work for the new structure, but later departed before beginning work. Rebar cages for the planned pilings were also delivered to the build site. A hot stage adapter was brought out of Star Factory and staged outside of Mega Bay 1. We could also see an excavator continuing work on the grounds in the right front corner of Mega Bay 2. While that was happening, ground prep work for Giga Bay continued, with crews spreading layers of gravel fill and geotextile membranes inside the building's footprint. A vertical cryogenic storage tank was brought out of Star Factory and sent over towards the Sanchez site. And speaking of cryogenics, the one and only testing update this week saw the liquid oxygen section of the tank farm and pumping station being put through a long duration test. Each of the eight pumps sequentially frosted over as they began to flow propellants through their lines. Once the station is commissioned and fully operational, it'll allow SpaceX to load Starship and Super Heavy much faster for launches. Next, we'll be looking at some other spaceflight updates that we usually don't cover here at Lab Padre. We'd like to branch out and cover a larger variety of space-related topics, so if you want to see more updates like this, let us know what you think in the comments below. At Northrop Grumman's SRB testing facility in Promontory, Utah, the first full-scale booster obsolescence and life extension engine, or BOL, was test-fired. This enhanced motor is designed to fly on SLS starting with Artemis 9. Changes include replacing the steel casing with carbon fiber, new electricity thrust vector controls to replace the legacy hydraulics, and higher energy density in the fuel. One minute and ten seconds into the test, the nozzle began to break apart and shattered shortly after. Solid fuel rocket nozzles have been a bit of a sore spot for the company, with a similar failure occurring on a Jim 63XL during Vulcan's second flight. 
Over at Stoke Space, they showed off the Flame Trench this week at SLC 14 for their upcoming Nova rocket. The medium lift launch vehicle is designed to be 100% fully and rapidly reusable, with the first stage consisting of seven full flow stage combustion methalox engines. The novel design of the second stage consists of an expander cycle hydrolox engine with multiple nozzles, allowing for deep throttle operation and an actively cooled metallic heat shield for atmospheric re entry. The company hopes to reach orbit with this upcoming launch by the end of the year. Gilmore Space's Eris-1 rocket returned to the launch pad this week in anticipation of its maiden flight. The launch was originally scheduled for March, but was scrubbed due to the development of a tropical cyclone. Unfortunately, during its next launch opportunity in May, the rocket experienced an anomaly on the pad. During final preparations before fuel load, an electrical fault triggered the payload fairings to deploy, forcing teams to stand down once again. With the conclusion of the investigation into the anomaly, Gilmore announced a net launch date of July 1st, which has now shifted to July 2nd, with the forecast wind conditions affecting pre-launch preparations. Now onto this week's Florida updates, Bob and Signet Warhorse 3 wrapped up recovery operations for the Starlink Group 10-18 mission. While Bob brought back the two fairing halves, Warhorse brought back Just Read the Instructions and Booster 1095. Back at port, the booster was unloaded onto the dockside stands. With its stay at the docks complete, Booster 1095 was laid down and sent back to Roberts Road. After a Sunday scrub, the Starlink Group 10-23 mission lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40. Falcon 9 Booster 1069 took off on its 25th flight to carry 27 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. Doug brought back both fairing halves from that mission and unloaded them at the docks. Signet Thunder towed home a short fall of Gravitas and Booster 1069 a day later, and the Falcon 9 was soon on the dockside stands. Booster 1069 finished its stay just a day later and was laid down for the journey back to Roberts Road. And marking the second launch of the day, United Launch Alliance's Atlas V551 Bruiser lifted off from SLC-41 carrying 27 of Amazon's Project Kuiper telecommunications satellites into low Earth orbit. Amazon plans to launch thousands of these satellites in the coming months. Launching from Slick 40 on Wednesday, Falcon 9 Booster 1080 lifted off for the Starlink Group 10-16 mission carrying another 27 satellites into orbit. The twice-delayed Axiom-4 mission also launched this week, carrying American, Indian, Polish, and Hungarian astronauts to the International Space Station inside Grace, the newest and last of the Crew Dragons. The privately organized mission is performing numerous experiments and will return to Earth in two to three weeks. This week, we also have an amazing set of new flyover photos from the great Greg Scott. There are some exciting updates to the Starship infrastructure at the Cape, so make sure you stay tuned. Starting off, we can see that Blue Origin is expanding their factory, with new facilities and tooling being built to increase their build rate and expand their flight operations. The second stage building remains mostly unchanged in the last three months, and the door appears to have been dismantled. New construction is underway near the former shuttle landing facility, which has been repurposed for Project Kuiper. Amazon is calling this new building a support facility, and it will give them extra room to store and work on their satellites to support an accelerating launch cadence. SpaceX's Roberts Road facility has been a hive of activity recently, supporting Falcon 9 launches amid large-scale construction work for Starship. The extensive area at the north side of the facility has been graded and filled, and construction is well underway on the Florida Gigabay. The structure's planned 24 work bays and two doors are apparent in the foundation work. Once the foundation is complete, steel should quickly begin to rise. The first pieces of steel have arrived for another Starship tower as SpaceX moves to perform the majority of their future Starship flight operations from the Cape. The launch table for the LC-39A Starship pad looks to be fully assembled now and should soon be ready for installation. Three months ago, it was in pieces, waiting to be put together. There's still a way to go before the pad will be ready for the launch table, but work at the launch site is moving along quickly. Extensive construction is underway at Launch Complex 39A as SpaceX rushes to prepare the Starship pad complex with its new flame trench, propellant storage, and water deluge facilities. The flame trench should be fully assembled within the next few months. Demolition work continues on the remains of the Delta IV launch facilities at Slick 37. 
The former Delta pad has been leased by SpaceX, where two more Starship launch pads are slated to be built. Construction also continues on Mobile Launcher 2. This new space launch system tower is designed to launch the Block 1B and Block 2 boosters. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.